Hi everybody, having understood the merits of expansionary monetary policy, let's in this video look at the other side of the coin. We'll start by looking at the issues that come when a central bank cuts interest rates. Now, even though we said that a central bank would be targeting inflation as their primary goal, there is still a risk of demand pull inflation as a trade-off, as a conflict of macro objectives if they cut interest rates for the objective of stimulating growth and lowering unemployment. This could well happen if for whatever reason growth and unemployment are more important to the economy. Then there is a risk of demand pull inflation as a side effect with inflation overshooting the target. I've shown that here on this diagram. We can see that if expansionary monetary policy is successful, if lower interest rates work, then aggregate demand is going to shift to the right from 81 to 82. And yeah, we might see higher growth and lower unemployment, but there could be this uh, side effect of higher demand pull inflation. So here we have a conflict of macro objectives that might not be desirable. At the same time, lower interest rates that stimulate aggregate demand could well widen a current account deficit, a trade deficit. And that is because as there is more growth in the economy, incomes will be rising and households will be sucking in imports, spending more of their income on imports. And that could widen a country's current account deficit. So we have a couple of trade-offs of macro objectives that we don't necessarily want when we use expansionary monetary policy. Another issue is the Keynesian argument that interest rates have a lower bound. And that means interest rates after a given point will lose their effectiveness when they hit their lower bound. Very much a Keynesian idea. And that is because they say that when interest rates hit their lower bound, the economy enters a liquidity trap. And the argument goes something like this. They argue that when interest rates are already so, so, so low, they've hit their lower bound then consumers and businesses out there in the economy have already converted their illiquid financial assets into more liquid assets like cash. So they've already converted all their bonds and other assets into cash, either to facilitate the spending on goods and services, or if you're a business to facilitate investment or to hoard it because of a lack of security, uncertainty about the future potentially. So you're hoarding it for security reasons. That's their argument. And therefore, if the central bank tries to cut interest rates further, it's not going to be effective because individuals, whether you're consumers, whether you're a business, you've already got hordes of cash that you can use to spend on goods and services or to invest. You don't need to borrow lots of money in order to facilitate that. And therefore, if the central bank tries to cut interest rates, we won't see the increase in consumption. We won't see the increase in investment that theory would suggest. So very interesting argument that Keynesian economists would use against monetary policy if interest rates are already so low. Interest rates have a lower bound. So a very technical point, but one which will be amazing if you can pull it off. Another issue is the negative impact that interest rate cuts will have on savers. Uh, now we know that when interest rates fall, the rate of return on savings will fall. That's bad news for people with savings. And worse is that if inflation is higher than the nominal interest rate, than interest rates in the economy, then the real return on savings could well be negative. That's not good for savers at all. The rate of return they're getting on their savings is less than the rise in prices in the economy. But deeper, the incentive when interest rates are cut are not to save, instead it's to borrow and spend. And if that means that we see less and less savings in the economy, that's a big risk that households are taking. What if for whatever reason, uh, people are made unemployed and they don't have the savings as a safety net to help them? What happens? Their living standards are gonna fall off a cliff. They might be homeless. So this is not the kind of uh, incentive we wanna be promoting in the economy to completely destroy the incentive to save. And also expansionary monetary policy comes with time lags. We learned about the transmission mechanism of monetary policy. It takes a long time for an interest rate cut to fully feed through the different channels of the transmission mechanism and then to boost aggregate demand fully. In fact, in the UK, the Bank of England say that an interest rate cut takes about 18 months to two years to fully feed through into the economy and have the, the full impact on aggregate demand. So that's something, uh, something to bear in mind um, and therefore, if the economy needs a short run boost, we're not necessarily going to get it to the level we would like because of these time lags. Now let's evaluate the effectiveness of expansionary monetary policy. Well, the effectiveness very much depends on the size of the output gap. So let's say interest rates are cut to try and promote growth and reduce unemployment in the economy. Well, we can use this diagram to help us. We can see that if the economy is already very close to full employment with a very small negative output gap, then any cut in interest rates, it might boost aggregate demand, but we're not gonna see much growth. We're not gonna see much reduction in unemployment rates. In fact, what we're gonna see more is inflation overshooting the target, higher demand upon inflation as a trade-off, 
Whereas if the economy is in a deep recession with a large negative output gap, then a cut in interest rates has got greater potential to boost growth, to reduce unemployment without much demand pull inflationary pressure as a side effect. At the same time, these next two points are really important. A reduction in interest rates, whether it's going to work in boosting AD is so dependent on the level of consumer confidence and the level of business confidence. Consumers need to be confident, confident in their job prospects, confident that they're not going to lose their job, confident that maybe they might get promoted and earn higher incomes. If that's the case, then yes, when lower interest rates occur, they might have the incentive to go and borrow and spend. They feel confident to do that. Same thing for businesses. Businesses need to be confident if they're going to go and borrow and invest. Confident in the future state of the economy, confident in expectations about demand and profitability for their business. And if they think that future profits are going to be high, yeah, then yeah, there is a reason to invest when interest rates are lower. But if consumer confidence and business confidence is low, there is no guarantee that lower interest rates is going to promote more borrowing for consumption or more borrowing for investment. And same thing when we can argue, guys, for mortgage interest rates. If consumer confidence is low, there's no guarantee that an increase in disposable income because of lower mortgage repayments is going to translate into higher consumption. Another key thing to question is whether banks are willing to lend themselves. That's all well and good. The central bank cutting interest rates and maybe even banks passing on interest rate cuts. But if banks are not willing to lend any money, then the interest rate cut is pointless, isn't it? And banks might not be willing to lend if there is a banking crisis or if there is a financial sector crisis in an economy or if banks are just unsure about their balance sheet security and their financial security going forward, then banks may well hoard cash instead of lending money out at lower interest rates. And that renders expansionary monetary policy completely useless. But also we could say, look, even if they're willing to lend, are they going to be passing on the full cut? Because if central banks cut their interest rate by 0.5%, let's say, will banks follow with the same level of the cut? If they don't, then we might not see the boost in AD that we would like to see. And the last thing we can question is the size of the rate cut. If we want expansionary monetary policy to really be effective in boosting aggregate demand, well, a bigger cut is more desirable. That makes it much cheaper for consumers and businesses to borrow, you can incentivize that borrowing more and therefore promote consumption and investment significantly. But also, uh, it means that the, the disposable income that mortgage payers will have, tracker rate mortgage payers and variable rate mortgage payers, the extra disposable income they'll have will be much more significant which can then boost consumption and boost AD. Whereas a very small rate cut will not necessarily have a big impact in boosting aggregate demand. So there's some key evaluation points. And if for whatever reason, an interest rate cut isn't that effective, then maybe the central bank will be forced to use alternative measures like boost to the money supply, quantitative easing. And I've got videos on my channel that cover that, which you can watch as well. So thank you so much for watching this, guys. Hopefully that all made sense and you understand it. Um, stay tuned for the next video when we look at contractionary monetary policy in detail. I'll see you then. Mm -hmm.